Congratulations. So, welcome everyone. Hope you all had a good lunch. Uh, so, today's session will be about leading in a time of complexity, leading people in time of complexity. And uh, it'll be a workshop on um, uh, the challenges of navigating uh, in the post a snapback in the post pandemic teaching and learning. Uh, and speakers today will be uh, Lloyd Phipps, uh, Peter Bryant, and Donna Langfoss from the Banford University. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so welcome to uh, this interactive session. It is interactive. You do notice on your desks are pens, papers. There's also a little bit of University of Banford swag, which our marketing department has given us to hand around. Please take that swag with you um, and any other pieces of merchandise that are on the table, except the coloured pens. Yeah, coloured pens. Except the coloured pens. Hey, if you want to work with coloured pens, you need to do this. Exactly right. If you're not at a table with some other people, please make sure you're at a table with other people. Thank you. Right. So just to introduce ourselves, uh, we are um, myself, Peter Bryant from the from uh, Banford, but also visiting at the University of Sydney. Uh, we have Laurie Phipps uh, from Banford as well, but also visiting from Keele University in JISC. And Donna Longclo, uh, visiting from Munster in Ireland, uh, as well as being a Banford faculty member. So we want to talk a little bit to give a bit of context about what we're going to do here. And this context is really important, uh, which will help you have an idea, I guess, about what we're going to do in the session. So uh, Harvey mentioned the idea of the snapback. It's something that Donna, Laurie and I have talked a lot about since the pandemic started and very much more since the pandemic has started to move into its next phase. And this is the idea that in our sector, we moved so incredibly quickly to a technological solution to a major crisis, but we are moving almost as quickly back to the way we did it before as if 2019 was peak education. And that was the best year in education we've ever had in our lives. And we're snapping back to things like pen and paper exams. We're moving back to face-to-face, uh, -face, which is fine, and there's real benefits to that. But we're losing some of the learnings that came out of the pandemic. Here in this country, you will, uh, many of you will know this particular set of tweets from Michelle Donnellan and, and Nadeem Zahawi. Um, as Laurie has pointed out, in many institutions, these had a particular name, didn't they, Laurie? Getting a Michelle. Getting a Michelle uh, from uh, the ministers who, and a similar thing happens in Australia as well. We received very similar emails from um, the then Minister for Education, which said that online learning is, or if you are online learning, you almost got cause to complain. But it's such a poor experience that you've got cause to complain about your education. So we call this session the end of learning design. And in some of this is all connected to what we do. We as learning designers, ed developers, educational technologists, and people who are innovators. And it's really important for us to think about how we can collectively, as I say there, collectively rediscover our professional, personal, and institutional equilibrium in this sort of cavalcade of stress that comes from the snapback. So let us first introduce you to the university which you are now all a part of, the University of Banford. Laurie, the rules of engagement. So we want you to forget, Mike, Mike's not here. Okay. We want you to forget about the campus that you've just come from, from the university, whether you're a vendor, we want you to inhabit the University of Banford. Forget everything that you know about your own experiences and think about inhabiting the scenario. Step onto our campus, inhabit the space. And when it comes to doing the workshop and discussing things with colleagues, we want the yes and approach, yeah? The improv, yes, and we can do this. Um, there's a thing about when we do these kinds of workshops and we say to people, this is what is, and you say, well, that would never happen at my university. So we want you to forget about that. This would never happen at my university. We want you to inhabit the scene so that everything is possible and it can be at your university. As Peter says here, be a teaching badger. Right, Donna, uh, huh? you can do this one, Donna. <laughs> Welcome to the University of Banford. A traditional future today, 
at the most modern traditional university. So this is where we are. Um, this is where we're starting. Um, and uh, please uh, have a listen to Professor Lewis Reed, who's coming to us via Zoom. Hello, professors. Two of my finest academics, apparently. Good to see you slumming it at a conference, I see. You just ensure you're filling out all the relevant expense and claim forms for travel. Actually, Vice Chancellor, we're doing a workshop today, and these are our um, esteemed a workshop. Is that what they're calling going to the pub these days, fellas? A workshop. Well, anyway, it's good to see you surrounded by our best educational and technology people. Now, I've got a very important announcement to make to all staff, so please stand by. Hello, I'm Professor Lewis Reed, Vice Chancellor of the University of Bamford. Here at Bamford, we pride ourselves on breeding successful leaders. We've done so for over 150 years. We all know that teaching online is an inferior experience next to the high quality in-person teaching that happens in our classrooms and our lecture theatres. At Bamford, we don't want our students distracted by social media and online shopping. We want them doing their readings, learning through listening to our esteemed scholars and engaging in provocative guided debates in their tutorials. Being a student at Bamford will be an experience that students will remember for the rest of their lives, like generations before them. At the University of Bamford, we are the human university. We are a community, learning from the finest scholars in the country, and we are a faculty helping you be the best leader you can be. We inhabit the finest traditions of face-to-face -face learning, and we are the most modern traditional university. So there you have it. We're snapping back to being a proper, post-pandemic university, and we're stopping all this digital nonsense. There won't be any job losses, so this is not a restructure, but I need you to consider what your role is going to be in our newly analog university. I need you to write me up a new learning and teaching strategy. And I know all you people are techies, but here's your chance to think outside the server room. Professors, team, I'm gonna leave that with you but I want the new approach on A4, in a folder, on my desk by the end of the session. So can you save your task? And I'll just move back to slides. We should be able to do that. Explain your task quickly. Explain it with the mic. I will do that. Thank you. Right. So. You might have got the idea that uh, the Vice Chancellor's got a few strategic priorities for the University of Banford. They're listed here. They're not out of the ordinary. Uh, he wants 0% government funding in five years and a 10% annual revenue growth across all his faculties. Uh, he wants a 1 million euro investment in teaching, learning and research buildings. You can put pounds in there if you want, put dollars, in which case it's about 19 million. Um, you have a 10% year on year student growth. And you are the most human-centric administration ministry services in the sector. And surprise, surprise, like absolutely no other university in the world wants to be a top 100 global university. So that is what uh, he would like from you. And what he wants you to do, collectively your tables on your big bit of paper, is to redesign the university's teaching and learning strategy. So what we want you to do is round your table, start working on what should be in the teaching and learning strategy for the University of Banford with the vision that Professor Reed has outlined, uh, with the objectives that you've been given, come up with four or five points about what should be in the teaching and learning strategy, noting that you don't have technology, that you've got face-to-face -face, and you've got the sort of aims and objectives. We'll put those back up for you. Off you go. 
recommended you work in groups of four. So, because we've got big tables. So, those of you who are in groups that are smaller than four, if you want, like, just, you know, again, yes, Anne. Yes, Anne. Yeah, a group of eight is kind of unwieldy. If you're comfortable with a group of eight, fine. Do your thing. Off you go. Go. There you go. There you go. How long do they have? As long as you need. <laughs> as long as you need, or as, as we choose. Yeah. One of the two. Okay. Let's hear some noise. There's no more pen. Oh, yeah, there's one. It's not going to work. It's too light. Oh, there you go. Six minutes before we get the Oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Also, yeah, true. True. But you know, maybe there's just being I mean, this is what I mean about that. So, the life is alive. Um, all right, let's talk about this. Um, we're working on right another. We're still talking about it. No one's starting to like it. We need to see what Let's Let's talk a bit of checking in about five minutes and see if it's stuck on the Because they can't edit it. something in the system. No. Let's go back to it and actually do that. Let's see. That's bad. There you go. Those things can see at about there, and then yep. after that, they're yep. there. I should be able to look at a computer through these, but it's so precise at the midpoint. That's my agree. Yeah. yeah, it is. It is. That's why I've gone for midpoint parts. Yeah. Well, wait for the student box here. Good old one. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I don't know what her name was. The students. Well, that's a really good one. Oh, oh. Oh, there's a bit of a. I can't remember what I told you about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. The um, same wife submitted the guy. Yeah, I think so. You would have been. Yeah, it did. Sound like. None of that is all nonsense. Yeah. 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 Uh, I'm going to take a wander around. I seem to have gone up. Keep an eye. If people get up to the three or four points, they have to have something they can edit. Because yeah. the next two are editing. Well, are we going to get. Are we going to get us them to stand up and make like one point? I think we can do it quickly. One discipline. Yeah, yeah. Someone will just. I can do it. No, I'm just saying someone is someone friends. I could come up. I've, I've been just like, it's more important that they talk to me. I reckon if we want to fight you in the three cycles, we've only got one cycle left. We can control that cycle. Okay. We don't have time. Quarter past. I reckon we give them at least five or six minutes. Just to really get in because we can speed up the next two. We have to. Yeah. I, I think we're getting feedback because I'm not like my way. Oh, it is. Oh, it is. Yeah, just trying to start off and see the train. I'll put this back in. I'll leave that out. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to do a table walk. Yeah. You want to do a table walk that way and I'll do the middle? I'm <laughs> <laughs> 
If if you haven't started writing something down, you probably should start writing something down. So I see some blank pages, so maybe write things down. <laughs> Someone pulled it. Dan? Oh, no. I know. Of course, Dan. He always does. He's never had been here for a minute. I know. Just wants to be there to sign up. Might just give them a bit of why they got two minutes. Just make sure you've got stuff down on paper. Just make sure you've got some of your ideas down. There's empty sheets of paper. That's uh, not the way we want to be. I do need a whistle and a light for attracting attention.
There is a chair. There is a chair. Do you want to queue like, it up? Yeah, queue it up. Is it just ready straight up? It's it's it should be ready to go straight after. So you need to go back, uh, click out of the yeah presenter down into Chrome. Yeah. Yes, I got, I got it. Should be ready to go. It should be unless it's re uh, yeah, it's ready to go. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Just a bit of pause for a second. I know these conversations are going well, which is excellent. But we've had a, a, a WhatsApp message or a Teams message from uh, Banford. They'd like to add a few issues that they've been experiencing with the new vision. So I'd like to introduce to you our Chief Financial Officer, if I can. It'll click through. There we go. Still at the workshop? How's all the work? She's not there. Professors. Oh, well, we'll keep working on your work. We'll just, we'll try and get the Zoom working to get her back in. That's right. Carry on. Carry on. That looks good. That's right, just this. We'll do students first. Okay. All right. While we're um, getting uh, the students up now, uh, we want to have an intervention as well uh, from our Vice Chancellor. Um, so we'll go back to uh, our Vice Chancellor, Lewis Reed. Still at the workshop? How's all the work? Two pints or three. Now, apparently, my announcement about 2023 University of Banford has caused quite the stir. So I've asked some of the stakeholders to come down to have a word to you, and you need to ensure that all their concerns are addressed by your strategies. You can't afford to lose them or their money from our community. What's your name and role at Banford? Hello, my name's Maureen and I'm a third year science student studying physics. And to be honest, I'm really angry about this new directive from the VC. I, I need my laptop. I mean, I'm not on Facebook wasting time. I don't even have a Facebook account. If, if anything, I prefer TikTok, but I use my laptop all the time. I use it to take notes, to look up formula, to ask questions about content that I didn't get to ask my mates in class about. I can't be cut off from the internet in the Morrison Lecture Theatre. What happens if I get an urgent WhatsApp? What am I going to do? I want to learn face-to-face, -face, but having a laptop open and connected doesn't stop that. It makes it more effective. Uh, what is your name and role at Banford? My role at Banford? I don't actually have a role at Banford. I am the CEO of WAN Consulting, V-U-A-N Consulting, one of the biggest consulting groups in this region. Uh, okay, sure, but what is your name? My name is Nicholas Larson, L-A-R-S-O-N. Um, as I said before, I am the CEO of uh, Vuan Consulting. We have a large footprint in this part of the world and globally, actually. Our reach includes UK, uh, the EU, and we also do a lot of business in the Asia Pacific. We work with about 500 graduates from uh, Bamford University each year. So our annual intake um, focuses on that kind of top tier of job-ready graduates, we need graduates that are ready to hit the ground running when we place them uh, with an employer. So they need those sort of digital skills to work in distributed teams, um, digital management uh, software skills. A lot of those skills are in high demand at the moment. So actually I've become 
quite concerned in the direction that Bamford's taking. Um, going back to pencil and paper exams, um, moving beyond that sort of digital ecosystem, that's, that's just not gonna work for us. Uh, frankly, um, that concern has made me look at other options. So I'm currently thinking about working maybe with Bamford City because at the moment they seem to be doing a much better job preparing their graduates. Um, and that's how I really feel about this. Right, so you've had some interventions there from students and from industry. How does your teaching and learning strategy stand up to that? Does it still work? Do you need to change it? Is there any additions you wanna make, any subtractions you wanna do? anything you want to take out or put back in keep working on your strategies comb them once again as the vice chancellor says we don't want to lose these fine contributors to our community or their um money I'll just open up another. Hang on, turn the sound off before you do. Yeah. Oh no, look, still the. Let me find it. You, you show me. I'll find. I'll find the link. Yeah. So I'll accept, and you can just type it in. Let me just get my phone. There we go. I've got Joan on a separate video. Yeah. So that's that's just a stand up one. Yeah. I don't know why this. While we had it stand. Okay, like, um, is, oh, there he is. AD double XC, yeah, zero, yeah, C seven. I'm just going to kill the muse. Muse? We're good. Okay. Okay, I'll just say that. Yeah. I'm ready to start off here at the same time. So, good work. Yeah. Two or three minutes, I reckon. Yeah. Right, just on 31. Right, so I reckon yeah. that'll get us to. Uh, right. You can buy it on 20 minutes to anywhere on two minutes. We want it to be pretty good. So, I mean, we didn't have enough time. Right. Thank you. Good. How are you doing? We've, um, we've been able to correct the uh, link, the Zoom link to our uh, CFO, and this might give you another layer of consideration for your strategy. So let us introduce our uh, CFO, uh, Joan Kale. You've, mu you've muted, Monty. Sorry. Hello, professors. Two of my clients, <laughs> academics, apparently. It's gone, it's the same link. Weird. It does. Much. Unless that's now got it in the, embedded in it. No. 
There it is. There it is. Got it. There it is. Colleagues, the quarterly financial position of the university is now available to interrogate by the shared financial report. Printed on A4 in the blue folder located on Candy's desk in the main administration building. The main headlines are that our forecasted revenue position is misaligned with our utilisation priorities and our OPEX and CAPEX requirements continue to be underserved by our student-driven resourcing and ongoing alumni engagement. The third and fourth quarter projections based on the pipeline of anticipated student recruitment and the current less than optimal staff student ratios are for an income shortfall that exceeds our borrowing capacity. There will need to be significant vacancy and efficiency adjustments unless we diversify our income base, subject to consideration of overall capacities and pressure points, unless we can widen the recruitment pipeline without extending the staffing envelope. I have spoken with Vice-Chancellor Reid and he's decided we need to upscale our capacity, generate more student revenue and enhance our ability to cross-fund our groundbreaking research with significantly increased fees income from our education portfolio. The senior leadership group are looking forward to seeing how you're going with your work on the new teaching and learning strategy and how it might adapt to this critical directive from the VC. Right, you heard the CFO. How does your teaching and learning strategy hold up to that? This university is now struggling with student revenue, struggling with the numbers coming in and struggling with the model, but that model still holds true. It still has to be a face-to-face -face university, the world's most modern traditional university. Start working on your strategy and does it need to adapt, change? What comes in, what stays out? Or have you got it absolutely right, James Clay?
Do you want to do the individual? How do you think? Um, Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Can I do it now? Let's do it. Okay. So um, we just got another uh, WhatsApp. So we have another message uh, apparently from the VC. Uh, so let's see what uh, he's got to say this time around. Um, it sounded urgent. Hello, professors. Loving this workshop vibe on you. And hello, valued colleagues. I am so, so excited to meet you all. Oh, we were expecting Professor Reed or something? Um, sorry, this has been a little bit sudden. Okay. I am the new vice chancellor at the University of Banford, Professor okay. Andy Warhol. I've been in the job for um, a few weeks. Um, and with our ranking position, graduate employability, and student recruitment experiencing some tiny challenges, uh, the Senate decided that Banford needed to make some changes. So let me introduce to you today the new University of Banford at Tech U. Welcome to the new University of Banford. 
Welcome to EdTechU, You, a digital tomorrow today. Banford will transform and prepare the digital leaders of the future by exploring emerging areas of cutting edge research, embracing the new realities of personalized learning and shaping the policy and social paradigms that define digital citizenship of a globalized world. ETU will be the leading university in the fourth industrial revolution by developing graduates and partnerships built on AI, transdisciplinary and new smarter vision of the future. All our graduates will be digital leaders for a sustainable future. We will develop and deliver education that leverages the power of collective intelligence, creative making and connected learning. We are a digital first university for a post-crisis new normal. Right, I hope you're as excited as I am. So here is your chance. Build me the learning, design, educational development and technology team you have always dreamed about. And I promise I will make that a reality. Now, get to action professors and team. Okay, so how many times have we, as, as people, sat around at alt conferences or having coffee together as learning technologists and said, you know what, if only they would fund us to do exactly what we want to do. If only we had the opportunity to build the university that we wanted to build digitally. Well, we've just got a new vice chancellor who has said to us, you can do what you want and I will make it a reality. You've just been through the trauma of becoming analog, of stripping away all the things that you were doing. We've seen all of the things around the finances. We've seen the things around employability, the student needs. And it's all now been stripped away by the new vice chancellor who said, you can build the university that you want. We're asking you to design an organization chart for an ed tech team of up to 50 people at the University of Bamford to deliver the VC's vision that you've just seen. Key things to remember, you're starting from scratch. You've got no history. Strip away everything that you've done and build this now. Your group are the only staff left. Your group are the ones that are left. But you can assemble the dream team. It's up to you how you design the university that you're going to take forward to deliver the dream that Andy Warhol just outlined. What does it look like? That's the, that's the task. Go. Turn your papers over now. We'll get the spare bit. That's fine. Yeah, there's an extra one. Is that okay? Yeah. I did my drone voice. You did. No, I just didn't. I just didn't open it. I didn't even press. Right, so we'll give this. Yeah, how long is that? Let's do this. 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 Let's do Well, could have it on the like, yeah. 
Oh, am I going to wrap it? Yeah, because you're doing the thing about how many people you've had in there. Okay. Okay, everybody. Okay, can I just... We're getting close to time, and I, I never want to run over time. Um, can I just... Can I just ask, in, in redesigning what you've built today, how many people put a VLE manager in? Okay, one or two, yeah? Technical, but you didn't actually name the VLE. Okay. What's a VLE, yeah. Um, spaces, interesting. Started think, thinking about the learning spaces. Yeah, okay. Um, how many people focused, how many people have got in their learning technology team, their dream team, we asked you to build, how many people have got the words pedagogy on the sheet? Okay. Yeah. We start seeing where what we really want and what we really want to do. Um, in terms of the, the kinds of people that you put into the team, how many people had a senior manager at the top? Okay, let's have a show for um, head of. Okay, ahead of. Let's have a show of director. Let's have a show of hands for the DVC. Yeah, DVC, two DVCs in the room. Yeah. <laughs> How important is it for us all to have that senior management buy-in to make the change? And when the, top, when the drive comes from, Han, from Andy, makes it so much more important. Um, we're going to be here for the next three days. And this is a 90-minute workshop that we ran in an hour. Um, so, yeah, I know. So Peter's going to do some reflection. Handing Peter the mic now. Excellent. Always like it when I get handed the mic. Uh, and I'm going to take that as well so I can move around. So the question I want to ask is a simple one. Are we snapping back as well? Do we, as people who are involved in educational technology, learning design, all of those films, are we thinking safe spaces ourselves? It's been a tough couple of years. It's a crisis time and crisis creates well-being problems, crisis creates stress, crisis creates um, yeah, fear of losing things. Are we ourselves traumatically, after that traumatic event, transitioning using those wonderful academic word of liminality? Are we moving in ourselves through liminal spaces? Are we speaking, uh, seeking respite from that by going to the uncritical familiar? Now, in true academic sense, and I do have the word professor in front of my name, so I do have to use this, um, Philosophy talks from Hegel talks about the familiar. Quite generally, the familiar, just because it's familiar, is not cognitively understood. We often don't know why we revert back to the familiar. But the familiar itself is perhaps not where we need to be reverting back to. In understanding liminality, liminality is not an ending. Liminality is part of a journey. The point of the liminality is you journey from one state to another state, one structure to another structure. We've just got through COVID and we're already facing things like generative AI. You, you wouldn't get through a session where I was, whether without it being mentioned. Um, equality, diversity, and inclusion, didactic practice and the return of didactic practice, micro-credentialing, sustainability, a key theme of the conference, obsolescence, yeah, precarity, all new neoliberalism and marketization. These are things that are going to keep creating liminal space, keep creating a liminal journey. And it's quite a challenge. What was really interesting is that the two versions of Banford you saw, the one by Lewis Reed and the one by Andy Verhal, um, they wouldn't have been universally accepted in any institution. 
there would have been people who saw Lewis Reed and said, thank you. That's what I've wanted all along. In my university, I have a professor, I think is his statistics line, I can't remember, who has publicly in the media told his students that they cannot bring a laptop into his classroom. And his class is about 900 people, I think. And he said, the student on there was very much based on his words. He said, I don't want my students looking at Facebook while I'm talking. Now that's at a large university with 75,000 students and whatever global ranking they like to admit, but it's a very good one. And that's what happens at a university where those kind of perspectives of the Lewis Reed happen and snap back and forward. When Andy Verhol comes on, some people in the university would look at that and go, yes, that's what I wanted. But there'd be other people who go, no, that's the worst possible thing I, want, I, I can imagine in my life. We've just had a situation at my university where a platform that we know helps students and helps students learning was both protested by the students because they believed that it was surveillance and protested by the, some of the academics who said we shouldn't be using technology. Now, is it a good platform, bad platform? That's kind of not to the point. The point it was there because it was good for students and it worked for students and we know it worked for students and it was banned. I think I used the word to Dom earlier. It's kind of like the Footloose product where we banned dancing. We have an opportunity to learn forward, learn from those practices. Because if we keep going back, we're not going to be in a situation to adapt to that constant series of crises. And learning forward allows us to reimagine our profession, our practice as learning designers, our practice as people who put pedagogy and put the student at the very heart of what we do. And that's hopefully what came through in some of those activities as you were trying to do that in your teaching and learning strategy and trying to do that in your um, redesign of your team. That, however, to learn forward needs agency. And agency is not universal. Not everyone has agency over these decisions. Do the students have agency? Sometimes, not all the time. Do academics have agency? Sometimes, not all the time. Do professional staff have agency? Sometimes, not all the time. Agency is not universal. Agency does come from how you are able to be in the room with the right people at the right time saying the right things. And that is hopefully some of the outcome of these kind of workshops that, we, that we've been running is that people can start to see some of the wording and the language that gets that agency across. So I just want to do a massive shout out uh, to all the people who are involved in the production of those videos. Uh, they all work in Elaine's team over here uh, and they work for Elaine. So thanks Elaine for her team. And to my wonderful actors that were in that, uh, Craig Gilliver, who is an academic uh, teaching on a program called Leading a Post-Crisis World, Tony Cannell, who actually supports nearly 15,000 students uh, to have better academic literacy, uh, Bettina Skudlarek, who is the Deputy Dean Research at the University of Sydney Business School, so we picked High Flyers. Uh, and who was the last one? Oh, Angela Hasimovic, who is an absolute teaching star at the University of Sydney, uh, who played the role of Joan Cale. And thanks also to all of Elaine's team, Boyd, uh, who we've got down there, Jared, Olivia. Oh, Olivia, sorry, I've missed Olivia. Olivia Costanzo is the, was the student, who's actually one of our students at the business school. So um, thank you, everybody. Please continue these conversations. I'd like to thank Laurie and Donna uh, for their uh, contributions today. Uh, and please continue this conversation amongst yourselves and uh, with us over the next three days. Thank you very much.